Hey there, Freeware fans. I've always loved first-person dungeon crawlers, and since playing Dark Spire for the DS, I went on a quest to find Freeware games that are played this way. There must somewhere be a Freeware game like Fantasy Star, or Wizardry, or Eye of the Beholder. Now, I know you can get a bunch of the classic titles off of Abandonware sites for DOS, but I was looking for Freeware, something that could be downloaded legally. IndieGames.com slash blog introduced me to this little game called RO9. This looks like a really primitive dungeon crawler, right? Yeah, this isn't the game. This is. That's right, RO9 is, has super simple controls except for the fact that you control nine completely independent adventurers. The game has nine dungeon floors, all with varied textures, similar to Wizardry 9 for the Super Nintendo. The color key down here on the bottom lets you know how deep in the dungeon you are. The dungeon layout in, is in-game randomly generated. That means if you look down a hall, then turn and look back, the hall will be different. There's no real method for exploration, and no need to get your bearings. You just kind of wander till you find whatever it is you're looking for. The fact that 85% of the sound effects are made with the creator's mouth adds to the tongue-in-cheek atmosphere of the game. You fight monsters by continuously pressing the up key, but you gotta be careful about that because while you're fighting, the rest of your adventurers are pressing onward. It can be a problem if one of your guys finds a ladder and accidentally goes down too deep in the dungeon. Then the high-level monsters are gonna beat him like he stole something. You do actually level up. Each of the character's levels can be measured with these single pixel badges. Also, the borders of each screen will turn more and more red, signifying how much damage has been taken. There are three monster types per level. Humanoids are easy, animals and creatures are hard, and the bosses are the hardest. There's one boss per person per level. When you defeat a boss, you can bring back a character who's died on that same level. That means if you go wandering around to a level where another adventurer has died, just defeat the boss and you can bring him back. Now according to the readme file, you should aim to pass one level per dungeon floor, but gameplay tends to be so chaotic that's really difficult to accomplish, especially in the beginning of the game. The readme file also warns you not to try to run from tigers, and they only appear on level 3. They're inescapable, but not very hard to defeat. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole game. My personal best is three adventurers through to the bottom. RO9 was made for the TIG Source Assembly competition in December 2009. It weighs in at slightly less than 2 megs, and for a silly tongue-in-cheek game, I've gotten a lot of fun out of it. You might too. This is Critical Failure for Tiger Claw TV, signing off.